into silence as best as we can. And just experiencing that inner calm. And if you can recreate what some of you witnessed as the beautiful scenes of nature, it kind of resonates with the spirit of feeling a sense of serenity and blending of colors, such harmony and such beauty. And knowing how each aspect of nature is interconnecting the waterways going through and beautifying the greenery and the tall trees. It's just magnificent backdrop and unlimited blue skies giving a very different magnificence that makes one feel unlimited. And I feel that spirituality allows us to become unlimited free from all the limitations that we might have been experiencing and coming to the innermost feeling of peace and love that's within us. Om Shanti. Shanti. So I, I was asked to speak on this topic of sensibility and spirituality and I just was uh, myself with taken by what is it that I was going to say about being sensible and spiritual. And there's a lot of information, technical of course, and I want to stay away from that. So just uh, telling some stories, some insights from this, my own life experiences and how that brought me into spirituality later on, not immediately, but um, we all, I think, have an understanding of being sensible. However we grow up, whatever our life experiences may be, and we learn the lessons through our own life experiences, how to be sensible in our thoughts, words, and action. And these are lessons that really enable us to deal with situations that come up in our life and then we get challenged and we find more events or more situations that demand some further inspection within and changes that we may be challenged to make within our own selves. So, um, there is always at the human level, I think, the desire to do the right thing. But, but we feel strongly many times that we have the right reasons and the right answers of what we want to do. So, and we do feel that we can be flexible and understanding of others. I think all human beings carry that understanding. Uh, I think I learned some lessons in childhood growing up um, in Mumbai in the 1940s and 50s. And one of my main teachers or my best friend or my inspiration was my grandmother. My grandparents, my mother's parents lived with us. And my grandfather was uh, 
physically disabled and always right from the beginning I saw her always in bed because her movements were very, very restricted, um, but she was very alert. And now I can say when I think about it that she was a detached observer in the family. I didn't know that then, but I recognize that. And she was the one I would turn to for anything I needed, for support, for comfort. And there were many lessons that uh, I learned from her, but two main things. One was uh, she really planted the seed of love for God in me that from very, very young age through all the stories that I heard from her, very strong faith. And when I say that it, it didn't have any rituals uh, associated with it, it was just the understanding through the stories of the significance of that supreme and its power and the relationship you can experience with love. So that was very powerful point. But the other was more practical because in the family, in our family, uh, we, are three, we were three children. Uh, I was the middle child, my sister, the oldest, my brother, the youngest. And so we, and growing up in that age, we were very fortunate that we belonged to a family that was middle class and met the needs of the children and good education. But the underlying theme always came up many times that middle child and the second daughter that would that surfaced in a very kind of a sudden under, uh, undercurrent of it one could feel sometimes. But as a child, it was difficult to understand all that. So I always went to my grandmother, sometimes with complaints. <laughs> and she always had an answer for me. It was the same answer each time, but it was given with so much love that I had no choice, just accept it and be quiet and really Oh, I, I hope that Lena, I think we have a little technical issue. But I really appreciate that she's sharing about being sensible and where she got her, her uh, common sense from, from grandma. So Darshan just left the room, so maybe he's going to help her. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, thank you, Michael. It's all in the family. Um, one thing to keep in mind is your own thoughts about, um, you know, being sensible and spirituality. I see she's now moved to Sudarshan's office. So I will add her. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Vina. Could you uh, unmute yourself when you're ready to talk? Thank you so much, Sudarshan. Quick thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like my environment in the classroom, but anyway, <laughs> I, I can adjust to the books here. It's fine. It's a professor's <laughs> atmosphere now. Right. Right, right. So, <laughs> sit down here and listen. <laughs> so I was saying about my um, grandma. We uh, yeah. Now Sanjeev says he has fixed it, but I I'm not sure whether I move again. Um, Is he in the next room? Yeah, yeah. And it, it would should be easy to just uh, pop Hi. back. Okay. All right. Okay. You're telling me I can move back. <laughs> I see him all masked up. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to play this game. Excuse yep. me. Musical chairs. It's no problem, Vina. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, Vina is going back to her 
meditation room. It could be too much bandwidth for uh, being used on computers that are on connected to Zoom. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I have a two magical hand here. <laughs> so this was the, her popular message always. Either you are um, is young, you understand, be loving. Oh, she's older, senior, you're, it's okay, just let it go. Um, but the way she would always say, it was said with so much love and understanding that I had no questions. There was no resistance on my part after that. I just accepted it. But I really don't think I understood the depth of what she said and what she meant until of course, um, much later that in adult life that I understood what she meant that there's always another side. Just be open to it because in relationships that's important. And she saw that that was probably the best for me somehow in the family, she felt that would be the best thing for me. So those were the, that's really, I felt that um, it was an, uh, if anybody else I opened up and said, which happened rarely, but when I did mention anything to any of my other relatives, uncles or cousins, oh, you, you, uh, they would give me a lecture. Or they have something else to say that I was not ready to receive. But what was said to me was gave me a sense of acceptance. And I felt that so much love, no questions, and just to be willing to see the other side. And of course, when you're a, a children, you're not ready to understand all that. It takes time. <laughs> but um, I felt like that was a big influence for me in learning to get along. And I think, so those were the lessons that helped me, you know, if you think of being sensible, you really need to be able to see that, the, that there is another way, that there is a way that one can deal with things. Um, so I felt that had a big, big impact on me. And um, the other thing that really touched me growing up was that I somehow always felt that was probably why I went into social work as a profession. And for those who may not be familiar, when we say social work as a profession, it is a, a professional degree. It's not the social work that many people do as volunteers in the world and do great job. But the professional training is at the master's level. And uh, so you develop certain skills to be practicing that. Um, but I always felt uh, in Mumbai somehow pulled, uh, whenever I saw poverty, it always pulled my attention. I felt I had some, to do something, but I didn't know what to. And I was a kid going to school and uh, very, very, dis very disciplined life, very disciplined life because uh, of course, my parents wanted us to have the English education. So English school had a lot of British influence that I was not happy at all about. But so it was a very contrasting life between the school and home. And but, but at, so I didn't have much that I knew what to do, but felt the need I have to do something, felt compassion. But then I did get an experience, personal experience uh, of helping someone. And this person was, um, so in those days and even now we have servants. And so this person was uh, very old, old in age, but he was, uh, had been like a servant in the family. But for me, he was not just a servant. He was in many ways a nanny because he played that part for me. And, he, and I felt the kind of got the comfort and the attention that at times my parents were too busy. They were very busy in because they both were oldest in their family. So they had a lot of 
responsibilities with the extended family and my father traveled a lot uh, to conferences. He was also a professor, but he traveled a lot, did a lot of research and things. So sometimes we would not see them much, but I felt that, uh, so his role was important to me growing up. And then I know, realized that when I become uh, older, like in high school age, that he was having poor eyesight and he could not see well. He did not have the resources to really care of those needs. And I felt like I needed to do something, but I didn't want to ask my parents for money and we didn't really work. So I wasn't really earning anything, but uh, we had a system then that whenever we had birthdays or uh, any special days like Diwali, we would get some money. And so I had for years some cash. And so uh, that the year I graduated from high school, by then, then I was not going to get money. That was the understanding. So I checked into my, my savings and I felt I had enough. So I was able to get him checked by a doctor and get him the glasses. And that experience was so rewarding to me, I couldn't believe it. I almost felt because I, that happened when I was graduating from high school. So I really felt like it's, I was giving myself something. I, I don't know why I felt that way, but it felt very strongly. And of course he was very happy and very obliged and so on, but it strongly gave me, I was giving, I was not just giving, I was receiving something and it made me so happy as if almost it was my graduation gift. Uh, I couldn't understand the feeling why I had that. Again, I had to wait till I get into spirituality more and I understood that that was the reason that pulled me into that profession. So I felt like these were very important things that I experienced. And in India to practice even uh, social profession is not easy because there's so much poverty. And so how do you meet people's needs and do counseling for what? And, but then what I found that working with low income women, because that was always my pull is to seeing the disparities in life and wanting to really be, all I could do is meet with them and counsel them, uh, listen to them, listen to their so stories, validate, bring out their positive, give support, give ideas, that's about it. No kind of great counseling going on, but it was very kind of supportive. But that seemed to really, I felt that created a relationship and a feeling that um, I was being useful. And most important was that I was not for my family to accept that I was going to go into low income group uh, homes. And uh, these were many homes where this had two rooms and there was uh, many of these homes where there were uh, individuals who had uh, changed their religions like we hear in, uh, in our teachings. Also the references have come they might have become Buddhists, they might have become Christians for better life, but the life was no longer, no, at all, not at all better for them, except that they changed the faith. So it was really a more interactive and just supportive kind of work that like one could do. But most of what came up for me is when we moved, when I moved to United States and, um, Coming to United States was also a journey that I won't right now go into it, but we have, uh, I've lived here most of my life, I would say now, and both my husband and I, we made Fresno our home since 67, and uh, we raised two of our children, son and daughter, and one of the things I felt that 
although both of us being in social work profession, he was teacher the whole time in Fresno State. I was teach, I was actually doing the counseling as sister described. Um, it was, we realized that in those days in the 60s and 70s, there wasn't that much of an understanding of people of other cultures. And there were very hardly any uh, Indians in the school. And so it was quite a challenge for them. And although we tried to be understanding and do what we could, there were times we didn't know what the solution would be. Uh, we, I personally felt sort of limited in terms of being of help in the right way. Uh, so it was uh, the only thing I could think of is just being there every evening and every weekend that we could be together, do different things. But um, there wasn't, and it's just being who we are. And both, both of us as parents, I think we never promoted rituals because neither of us grew up with that kind of religious practice. It was more value-based growing up. We both have had different uh, experiences growing up, but it is more on value-based. So I think we really try to promote values and practice that. Um, but I know that they both encountered very lot of challenges for them. And um, I often felt that somehow I was not able to really fully address that or meet that need. But then, uh, but we, I know that one thing they did get was um, extended family was not here, but two American couples uh, who were very close to us, they were like grandparents to them. And I felt that that was very important because to me, that experience was important to me. So they, I felt that they got that. <laughs> I have a, a question for you, Veena. So mm -hmm. what, what I'm understanding is that um, being able to communicate to these people you were serving, and this is in your social work that you were uh -huh. assigned to these families? In India, yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then now when you came to the United States, it was a different story. Right. Okay. It is a different story. And here it was, uh, uh, I kind of have, didn't bring up anything in terms of social work here, though I, that's what I have done a lot here. I kind of went on to talk about um, family at home, but um, I can say something about experience here also of social work. Oh yeah. no! It, I just wanted to be clear, right, uh, right, because yeah. we had uh, jumped. I know but, I jumped, <laughs> but it's all good because what I'm hearing is that, if I may, um, sure, it. I'm hearing that your life has been drawn to serve, and yeah. whether it was the servant, the nanny at your home, um, or whether it was, you know the people there in your neighborhood in India or community there in India, but also in with your family and mm -hmm. um, that you were just, that was the sensible thing for you. You were following your yes. heart and your, your desire to be yes. available for others. And you right. were listening to what was the best way to go about that. Right. Right. It's That's interesting. It. What's interesting, Vina, is because you weren't quite sure what the steps were in spite of whatever challenges. Yes. And so yes. I, 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 so what made you, how did you, you know, because I don't know, what were the steps that you did even in India that helped you to assess what was the right thing to do with a family or with a, a group? Yeah, that because I, I, it was a training. It because I did get education there also. There's a, um, a social work uh, program there that I was part of. I got the training in. It was um, two years training. It was like masters actually, uh, but it was a private institution, so they didn't uh, could not give a degree as such. But it was professional training. 
and which was developed by an American social work programs here, actually. But a, a you know, it, but changes that would be more appropriate there in that setting. Mm -hmm. So that is, that was my guidance. But um, and I also felt to some extent intuitive because um, I was coming from a, a perspective of a woman, and I have experienced some things on a very subtle way growing up. There was nothing blatantly wrong in terms of I grew how I was grew, grew up, but it was very subtle because the environment was such. It was just after partition, things were tilting. You know, although people marched with Gandhi, women marched, but it doesn't mean people's thinking and attitude had changed. Mm -hmm. It changed this much for wherever they were educated families. They made sure that they won't be any difference between son and daughter, that they both would get the right education, the right living conditions and everything that would not be, that would be totally out. But their own thinking and attitude, they have to work on too. So it I see that, because that you're talking the 50s and 60s went growing 40s up. 40s and 50s, yes, yes. So you were listening to a whole different call than your yes. usual young woman in India. Yes. yes. The calling had to be doing something with women and, and really being pulled by all the things that women were experiencing. And that was really, and actually people don't know, but even in the sixties, um, women's movement had already begun in India in different ways. And there were educated women who were writing also and questioning the literature, the stories. In fact, I don't have, I lost this precious book because there was a, a woman from South India who had studied and researched and written her own understanding of Ramayana from a woman's perspective. It was very powerful. And so there, it was already happening, but it, it, these were all small groups. And it wasn't something that uh, everybody could really were in tune with majority was still committed to traditional life. But um, yeah, so that was no doubt an impact. And, and then when we came here, um, also I chose to work in, in environment and settings where I could be have one-on-one -on -one, uh, opportunity to work with people. Uh, and families means you end up always more with women and children. So that was something very important. And here also I did choose to work more with whatever I got the opportunity to visit families that were low income. In Fresno, there's a certain area where African-Americans live and most people will say, you can't, shouldn't even go to that area. I would be there all that, I could be there without any problem and be meeting the families and talking to them because we, we were, I was working for developmental disabilities, children that are born with developmental disabilities and how they can get, because there are services through the state of California. And that was the end also. And that's where I met Mike Kesselman was also there as a psychologist that time. But I was doing all this uh, in, come intake work. And so I was visiting. And then we have influx of Southeast Asians that came in the 80s. And uh, they came from an environment from Hmong, from Laos, where their life was very different and had un gone through so many traumas. So a lot of their children had disabilities. In Lagos, Africa? Is that what you said? Laos. Laos. Oh. Laos in Southeast Asia. Yes, Vietnam, Mom, Laos. Laos. Okay, Vietnam, thank you. Laos. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, those were the one who came to in 1980s to America, and particularly many have settled in Central California, particularly in Fresno. And um, so visiting their homes was a big challenge in many ways. Oh, but yeah. uh, I I was very felt very strongly I want to serve them. I want to because I it, uh, if I just felt because nobody want none of my colleagues wanted to do that. <laughs> and, and from the agency, but I opted, I said, no, I'm going to go there. So I felt very strongly to serve these souls. And 
And later on, when I was working with the hospital, Valley Children's Hospital, I chose to that job because I just wanted a different, deeper experience. It wasn't, you know, many times my husband felt that, why don't you seek a supervisor job, a direct administrative job, which should now you're ready for it. I said, no, <laughs> because the, I, I wanted to close the doors at five o'clock and be home for my children. I did not want to bring administrative chaos with me in the home. I didn't want that. And I really wanted to be with people. So that was also um, experience why I kept changing jobs for more of that different experiences and then stay at one place. Because, and that was um, where I learned a lot also counseling and seeing the strengths of families and children. Children many times very strong, ready to let go. Of course, parents not. It's amazing. Interesting. And, so yes. the children had more resilience. Yes, they were the intuitively, I think, more connected with the divine is my feeling right now. But I learned a lot, but I was forewarned by my predecessor there that watch out, you will be sucked in, be careful. And because you can be in the hospital for hours and not even know that you have been there 10 hours. And that's exactly what happened. And then I decided that I needed to transition from that. And then I totally changed and went into cheat teaching and decided to try out uh, women's studies and but more and then social work also. But it was really my searching. I think I think it was still searching. There was something incomplete about understanding of women and what they were not why they were not being able to be fulfilled in their lives in some ways. So that was a big thing in my mind a lot. It, and it was only when I came into connection with Brahma Kumaris, and that was in 92, that I really got a very different experience. Um, and a lot of uh, people know Dadi Jainti, so I will just use that as an example because I was in contact with the Ramakumaris for a few years between 1992. There was communication, and Sister Chandra invited me to come for a special ceremony, Rakhi ceremony. And uh, I was surprised to hear that because uh, usually in, in culturally it is sister tying a rocky with a brother and what, what is this? You know, that, you know, uh, or everyone, I'm going to tie, be, have a rocky? What sort of it, an interesting shift? Um, so I was could curious. You explain, could you explain a little bit about what rocky is just a little? Okay, know, rocky a, is tying of a bracelet on the arms, uh, on the Under right arm of a brother, or you traditionally here, and it is a sign of symbol of love between brother and sister. And just like we have Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, we observe in India Brother Sister Day, promoting brotherhood, sisterhood, because in India you can have, you can create more brothers and sisters that way too. A lot of people did that. <laughs> and this is a, an annual festival. Yes. Summer, right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right. So when I when you are there, on this Brahma Kumari event and everybody's yes. tying Rocky to everybody. <laughs> and I, I see. So Dadi Janki tied Rocky to you first time. Yes. Wow. And because I was invited, I went, and I was curious also. But that whole experience was a lift. That and and really a sense of empowerment came from that. No, there is no difference. Nobody is less than, can't be. There's a different meaning here. Felt very strongly. And mm -hmm. then it became that I did get to 
be uh, in San Francisco often enough to take um, the classes in meditation there and learn meditation. And uh, so that uh, shift was very powerful. And I found that the uh, what I took most importantly, I think, is the message that we are all souls. Mm -hmm. That, you know, and we know that. And that as souls, there is the whole understanding of myself being of peace and being of love, that I really needed to connect with their inner strength. And that's what I was missing, some inner strength. And, and that is where I, I found that answers. And the whole, what I was missing was the uh, that I needed to feel that men and women were saying that we were really no less in any way. And he, this, I, that was affirming, completely affirming to me at that time. And I also was very much uh, thrilled to see brothers who were had also integrated in their personalities. You know, and that also was very powerful for me. I felt that really they showed that, and you know, that really it's possible. And uh, that helped me a lot. So and when you say uh, integrated, Vina, you mean like balanced in nature? Um, yes, feminine and masculine and all the BK brothers in San Francisco that time in 90s, there were four or five of them at the center. And they all were just uh, had their own jobs and all responsibilities, but interactions with them were so warm, mm -hmm. so caring, so loving. And uh, it was just, I could see that they, they, they had kind of integrated both the qualities because that's yeah. what, that is what was most important message I wanted to hear and see. <laughs> And also I noticed when you're reminding me of my first time, I was impressed when I first came to a Brahma Kumari center, the diversity. Yes. There would be a Bohemian musician and a college professor who would, you know, um, uh -huh. there would be a, 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 a photographer for a magazine and uh, a producer. I mean, there would be these so many mothers, such a diverse, personalities, yes. cultures, but of right. course, San Francisco, you yes. know, lends itself to having diversity. But yes. for me, I had never even met anyone from India yeah. before I came right. to Kumaris. Right. So and there yeah, you were. That's quite a and transformation for you too. <laughs> and so now back to your story, Vina. So you, your big take home was this aspect of soul consciousness. Yes, yes. And I found that, you know, the, there is power within, but we don't know and we are not familiar with that. And we can only get there when we connect with God and, and through learning meditation and having that experience of connecting with the Supreme and feeling that energy coming to you that reawakens your own true self, you begin to feel loving and clear and peaceful within yourself. So you really, you're really giving to yourself, which is the first thing you need to do is really mm. serve yourself and you know really come out of that um, yourself. So I feel that it was like a bridge from moving from one way of thinking and living to, another, to something that was more real to me. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So from rather outside in and trying to manage everything, you were now changed to inside out? Right. Right. Okay. And I think that shift happened quite very quickly uh, in the first two, three years. I was just learning all the disciplines, all the different practice. And I was adopting that. I was not, I didn't have questions about anything. And um, I was able to 
to um, you know follow the routine that we uh, do in Brahma Kumaris about no, meditation. No, Vina, at that time, you first came to the Brahma Kumaris, you were coming to San Francisco and you were, were, were you not also getting your PhD? At that yeah, uh, yeah, it was a doctorate in education. And uh -huh. uh, I don't know why <laughs> I was doing that. It was also a lot of things that I decided to do was based on intuition. All at one time. Okay, now my question then would be to you, here you are embarking on a whole different spiritual journey for yourself, a whole new way of looking at life and maybe even coming home to yourself, but uh, also venturing into, you know, going back to school. Yes. Now, <laughs> did, did this new uh, outlook, this spiritual outlook, did it help you facilitate that shift? Do you, or how did it help you change or see things? Um, in in how you were going to now, you know, not only embark on this new, you know, degree, but also with your family, and the mm -hmm. health issues and so on that were going on for your family. Yeah. yeah. Um, the education, um, the health issues came later. At that time, is mainly my education, my interest, uh, my getting the degree. I did, it was amazing that. Um, uh, you know, going to USF was also something came up intuitively and it was um, not something, it took me a year or more, more to decide to actually do that uh, because I was not seeking a career, a new career. Uh, you know, I did work after the degree at Fresno State, but it was not the intention was that I'm going to go into a career, another career. It was just something important that I needed to attain. That was how I felt. And the education at USF was wonderful because I, and particularly because the program that I was in was multicultural education. So it really opened more doors of understanding different cultures and how we really need to come together through education. So it was a very different perspective and um, the students there were all working professionals in the field of education. So they all, we all had a, a real sense of uh, being responsible students and yet and knowing that we were all carrying a load. So we were very supportive of each other. And so it was a very wonderful experience in that sense. And I think uh, practice of med it was a challenge because I was going back to school after working and raising two children. So it was a big gap, but I think meditation was helping me to improve my concentration. Mm -hmm. It did make a difference in my ability to concentrate, write papers, and then everything I did, somehow all my papers brought up spirituality. And were you also working and going to school or just dealing I'm, with- I'm working, I was just working part-time to teaching two classes at City College, you know, on women's studies classes. This was one course that was, because they had hired me full-time and then I made the shift and I just felt they were not too happy that I, I wasn't going to be there full-time, but I just felt that I need to continue. And then I also, because you have to do a doctoral dissertation. So I knew that I was going to do that on Southeast Asian women uh, uh, and how they were dealing with their lives, going to college and uh, mm -hmm. managing a life in their home, which was very conservative, very different, very demanding, and yet they were studying. So it all kind of came together in that sense for me. Um, but I was not really, after graduation, I was not in a hurry to seek a job where I would, you know, again, be get <laughs> a professional accomplishment or a, a be in that, what they call in the universities, career ladder, or you, you have to start at like be a, this teacher, that assistant, associate, and all they have kind of a system. I, so I was, was not drive? interested. Then what was your drive? 
my drive that's was that's an really, investment <laughs> yeah is to I mean, really time. Work, work continue to work and i was just teaching those two classes women studies i did my dissertation i just wanted time off but <laughs> not teach but um uh situation by said you know at least fill in the papers for a part time work you know they you can be a, a, on a poll so to please him i did and I, totally to please him to be, put an end to that story and then i went to india because i was going to mount abu and then be in mumbai to meet my to be with my family there and that's when i get a call uh that to, from the that the, through the depart it was from the department but through my husband of course are you ready to teach a class when you come back i said i'll be one week late it's okay and the class was ethics and social work and at that time i felt at fresno was, state at fresno state mm -hmm. you know they needed an extra person and it was ethics and social work that also was a topic and i was going to be one week late it was okay i said if this is happening this is a divine message for me <laughs> yeah. so i accepted that i accepted that and i did teach for a while i did enjoy teaching but i never went applied or didn't was never interested in tenure track positions i did not want to do that uh did some freedom for myself in so i worked in the department through another grant uh and that was fine and i worked with that for five five six years and then uh when i was really building it up and i was also asked by another department i think it was forget the name of the department now but uh to do a, a develop a course in um, asian american studies so uh which i did and sometimes sometimes i was still doing women studies too keeping one leg here one leg there so i was really in the midst of all that mm -hmm. for 5 6 years and then i suddenly got got a message in summer time resign that was just the one word came resign i resigned really yes and it was created i know it got my got my husband really wondering what's wrong and also my colleagues there thought that was crazy but i mean i didn't really i, I did stay on for 5 6 months and then i really quit but i and then i taught a course for three some just like a part time became part time teacher for two three semesters and then i stopped that also but yeah i i was um, involved with uh, the child welfare project to prepare a field work internship manual and everything was very powerful for career wise great experience that but i had been given two messages when i started you are on loan i was just told you are on loan there there's nothing more said or needed to be told and then when so when it came resign okay and so all right so you you were getting message you're telling us about certain messages that you get along the way intuitive and, yes uh these touchings or downloads um however way you want to describe but what do you think that who was talking to you or how, was it your higher conscience your higher self um i i feel it was coming from god mm -hmm. i really felt that i had um, been through the my practice in meditation and what i was doing at home in terms of that we going to have classes and you were coming often that time to help us but <laughs> you just made many trips in our time and in fresno so th that was also happening simultaneously so i think the calling was that what i was really looking for in the wholeness of women and seeing that integration and giving that to others would be as a brahma kumari 
it just became very clear. So I, I really have to say that uh, there has been a lot of cooperation and support from my husband through all this, <laughs> all these different things that I've done. <laughs> it's lovely to see I, I don't think you uh, work together because you both of you will do projects together. Yes, we and have done that. Yeah, and I'll, you've invited me to some of those programs, and uh, I really love how you both introduce each other with so much regard. It's just so heartwarming, um, and I'm, I really appreciate you taking us through your, your journey, and so how do you, now looking back, what do you think comes first, or what's the most important thing that helped you navigate the sensibility or the spirituality, or can one not do without the other, or does one actually instigate the other? I mean, what is your perspective on that? Spirituality, spirituality comes. Uh oh, I think I froze. First, back. Okay, is could you say that again? Could you Sorry, Vina, to interrupt you. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Spirituality comes first. And because that, that intuitive connection uh, with God is the most important thing uh, to guide a person. A and then you can make sensible, since you can bring in sensibility there in terms of uh, the choices you make and see that you are doing the right thing for the right reasons. And, uh, and that can only happen and understanding of different things in life, in uh, relationships, the dynamics in relationships. It is spiritual framework helps one to really understand because then you begin to bring in the understanding of soul. So where there are difficulties in relationships, in the family, um, you think of the souls and bring that consciousness. And I, I really worked on that uh, a lot, um, particularly in relationship with my children, uh, because I had felt that somehow I, I was not able to do enough for them. Uh, and the pain that they had to experience through school is to really begin to, in my mind, to see them as a soul. And to not that I was calling them anything different, but my consciousness, I tried to work on that. And it helped me to change my way of looking at some of the behaviors that as a parent, maybe I didn't like or didn't think it was compatible, uh, but allowing them to be who they are doesn't matter if they, uh, not everyone is going to meet everybody's um, expectations and it was okay. So I think at a personal level, that's where I feel that I feel very good about it. I'm not perfect. I still, we still run into situations as parent, as mother and servant, but I personally feel that I, is far better now because even if there are things that uh, a young uh, adult is doing that I may not agree to, it's okay. Because if I want, what is most important is love and respect because that is only going to bring about change. Otherwise it won't. And um, also, with my uh, daughter, as you know, that she is um, one who has um, a cer cancer survivor. And we went through a lot also in our relationship, but now because of this background spirituality and what I have been able to do, we feel more our relationship as friends. And I feel that we listen to each other. We are not trying to solve each other's problems, but we are listening. And you need always in this world, a friend to listen. So that becomes very, very, very important to me. It's very special feeling. 
uh, that I think I have. And because I see spirituality as the more, most important, I think my life, and I think my husband would agree too, that in our last several years, it's been in this practice 28 years. So uh, I've been the spiritual framework. Everything begins the whatever I do, whatever my disciplines are as a Brahma Kumari, I must follow them no matter what. And other things fall in place. Sometimes um, we may have to adapt a little bit and accommodate, but it's important to stay with the discipline because that is what guides my day, guides my energy. So I feel that there is importance to spirituality. And uh, I'm finding that out in this last few years, last few months in pandemic. Um, also that that's what has kept me going because you know, we all of us, as fa even all families have been dealing with so much. Uh, so it's uh, not a, anything unknown. Yeah. Hmm. So I can't hear you now. I guess I was speechless. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, what you're referring to are these families that you've been helping through the COVID situation because some of these families have had people with COVID, they've survived COVID and hopefully you didn't lose anyone, but... Um, yeah, and in that aspect, really, I can only do is meditation. I really don't have anything else that miracle that we, we can do, but it is people are seeking that for support. It's helping them. And I cannot speak for others in terms of what, but I know that obviously it's helping mm -hmm. uh, uh, cope with the situation. And, uh, but that was when, um, there were the two families, one family did loss, have experienced loss. And, but the, those who were um, getting together in a large number actually, um, afterwards sent messages that we needed it. It helped us cope. So really they were doing that for their own self. It really helped them. And if that I can do, uh, you know, what more, what less? And I felt good that I could be there to do meditation and help them. Wow. So there were many fam families that you just sat with them and We just shared. made it like we do, right? Did meditation. No, we didn't get into sharing of anything, just meditation and sending vibrations to the uh, individual who was in, who may be in that situation. Oh, Vina, that is so beautiful. I mean, because you're there to just be with them. And that what I'm hearing, you said building blocks, you're not trying to um, convince or indoctrinate. You are, you are being a living example of, of what it means to be um, an angel in someone's life and I think we all have that capacity. It's just listening to that. And so I, I what I heard throughout when, when you were talking, you said building blocks and that was love, respect. And throughout you kept saying, I just listened. You realize that through your steps, you just listened. And that's what you said your grandma did for you. Yes, yes, it came back to me. Yes. <laughs> And maybe through <laughs> osmosis or just because she was a living example for you. And yes. she, didn't, she didn't have your life experience, no. but, but the skill set, she was able yes. to help you on your journey. And um, of course, spirituality allows you to be more of a good listener. And yes. we start with ourselves. Right. And I think that's interesting that you also said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing it for myself. I don't need to have yes. uh, a big right. accolades or uh, mm -hmm. a big job waiting for me. Um, yeah. 
it was just something that you did. I, what I keep on hearing is you just followed your heart. You even yes. said. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And I, I feel grateful for that. 